Yeah, listening in to Abby as she's talking on Facebook Live, a lot of rain, that wind is picking up in North Myrtle Beach, and things will continue to deteriorate through the morning hours and into the afternoon. Right now, the center, center of the storm, right very close to Charleston right now. We're still getting those bands coming in off the ocean, hugging the coast, making perhaps landfall or perhaps just offshore of Charleston. It kind of looks here that the uh, near Folly Beach, that could be the eye wall right, right across the coast there. Now, they have had a storm surge in Charleston. Charleston, and it is the third highest storm surge on record, and it is the highest storm surge that they have had since Hurricane Hugo. Down in Savannah, they had their highest storm surge on record on the Savannah River, even higher than 1979 Hurricane David. That was their previous record. Hurricane Matthew broke that. So we're talking about extensive storm surges across the Georgia and low country coast of South Carolina all the way up to Charleston. And this is building northward. So this is going to be coming up our way. That center of the storm, the eye is moving through Charleston now, heading toward the Isle of Palms, and it's going to be making its way up toward McClellanville and Cape Romaine. That's when we're going to see, start to see things going downhill very quickly in and around the Georgetown area. In fact, that band of very heavy rain from the eye wall is starting to push into northern parts of Charleston County. That's getting awfully close to the Santee River. So things will start to go downhill in the next hour or two in Georgetown. And then that those bad conditions will work their way up the Grand Strand as far as the hurricane force winds and the storm surge is concerned. Across the PD, we're still dealing with the rain, just tremendous amounts of rain. It is still raining very hard. This is going to continue for several more hours through the morning and for most of the afternoon hours. So many places have already seen over eight inches of rain. We're looking at a foot of rain in some locations as well. The rainfall and the flooding is going to be one of the biggest problems we're going to see with this storm. Here's a look at the rainfall estimates so far in these reds and purples across the PD. That's more than four and five inches of rain. And notice some of the darker purples here near King Street. That's over eight inches of rain. Some of our rivers are already flooding in and around the Andrews area. The river is uh, starting to cause some problems as well. And some of our flood gauges along the beaches are starting to see some problems as well. So our forecast heading through the morning hours, there's that band of very heavy rain. 10 o'clock, it's still sitting over our area. It is still going to be here into the afternoon. By about 5 o'clock, the heaviest rain starting to shift into North Carolina. And then through the evening hours, we are going to start to clear out. Even through midnight, we're still going to see a little bit of rain around. It's not going to be nearly as heavy. That wind will still be gusty. But after about 6 o'clock, the worst of it will be over and it will start to move away. But we're still looking at tremendous amounts of rain. And our winds right now across the PD, 20 to 30 mile per hour winds, all coming in out of the north. So that's really not that bad across the PD. It's windy, it's causing trees to fall down and power outages as well. But the winds along the coast are 25 to 30 miles per hour right now and it's out of the southeast. It's that southeast and east wind that's going to drive that ocean water against the coastline. That's going to cause the storm surge and when the hurricane gets closer, we will see these winds getting into tropical storm force over 40 to 50 mile per hour winds and eventually hurricane force. And unfortunately for us along the coast, that coincides exactly with high tide. And that's one of the reasons we're really worried about the storm surge along the coast. And as far as the peak wind gusts we've seen so far along the coast, a 50 to 60 mile per hour winds had a wind gust earlier on Winyaw Bay up to 70. And then the PD, tropical storm force wind gusts over 40 miles per hour. It gusted to 59 earlier in Sumter. And we'll see those winds continuing to go up. In fact, we are expecting through 6 o'clock, uh, tropical storm to hurricane force winds along the coast could see winds up to 80 miles per hour. Once you get past Conway, it's going to be generally uh, tropical storm force winds east of I-95, 50 to 60, west of I-95, uh, 40 to 50. And we've been talking about the storm surge. This is going to be critical around 124. That's going to be the high tide. The low tide that we just had about an hour ago, it still looks like it's high tide out there. So the tide never fell overnight tonight. So we're starting at low tide where it normally is high tide. Those tides are going to quickly go into the dunes and cause coastal flooding. From Cherry Grove northward into North Carolina, we could see the potential for three to six inches, or three to six feet, excuse me, of storm surge. But it's Cherry Grove southward through Ori into Georgetown counties. That's where we could see six to as much as nine foot of storm surge. That's going to be the critical part of the storm along the coast at high tide. 
coastal flooding is likely, severe beach erosion. We could even see property damage along the coast as well. So we'll be watching this starting to go downhill in another hour or so in Georgetown and Georgetown County. And the worst of the storm coming in for most of us after about 10 o'clock this morning. So uh, we're going to continue with the updates. Uh, we'll be back coming up after this break.